Metrobank, Metrobank Foundation, and GT Foundation welcome you to the George SKT Grants Turnover. This occasion serves as one of the highlights of Metrobank's 59th anniversary celebration. To begin, please rise for the invocation and the singing of our national anthem. Nurture in me, O oh God, a trustful optimism. True moral courage, a beautiful mind. Teach me to serve with a happy heart. With a humble mind. With a hungry soul. Help me turn chaos to order, confusion to clarity. Enemies into friends, indifference into love. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome your hosts, GT Foundation Senior Program Officer and OIC Head Lilac Lazaro and GT Foundation Program Officer Brian James Sudaria. Good morning everyone! Our privilege to serve as your Masters of Ceremonies for this virtual event, the George SKD Grand Start Over. Brian, today is extra special as we dedicate this annual tradition to our late founder and group chairman, Dr. George SKT. Aside from being a figure in the banking industry, we all know that Dr. T dedicated his life as well to the great work of nation building and corporate philanthropy. I agree. This event is another venue where Dr. T's humanitarian legacies shall continuously live on. We honor him for the many lives he has touched and organizations he has empowered through the various programs of Metrobank Foundation and GT Foundation. Before we proceed, to those who would like to share photos of the event on their social media accounts, please use the hashtags hashtag GSKT Grants Turnover and hashtag Healing Together. You can also share your comments as we live stream this event via the Metrobank Foundation Facebook page. Thank you. You know, Lila, as the pandemic and other natural disasters continue to demand more financial aid, 
the value of grant funding and philanthropic giving have never been more relevant than ever. To add to that, I'd like to highlight that the grant-making initiatives of MBFI and GTFI are aligned with the attainment of specific sustainable development goals or SDGs. It allows us to be more strategic to contribute meaningful and sustainable solutions to the country's social development challenges in health, education, and poverty alleviation. This year's George S. K. T. Grants Turnover has chosen the theme Keeping Hope Alive, that in this time of isolation and vulnerability, we have to keep our hopes high, derive inspiration from one another, and be a source of strength for others. We acknowledge the presence of the Board of Trustees, Advisors, and Officers. To formally open today's event, let's hear it from Metrobank Foundation President and GT Foundation Executive Director, Mr. Aniceto M. Sobrepeña. Esteemed guests and colleagues, good morning. On behalf of the officers and staff of Metrobank Foundation and GT Foundation, led by Chairman Arthur T., we welcome you to this year's Grants Turnover, a tradition of every Metrobank anniversary. On this 59th year, our annual ceremony is renamed the George SKT Grants Turnover to honor and perpetuate the legacy of our founding chairman. This turnover is one venue where we continue to carry on his values through programs and projects of our social development partners. We extend our sincere gratitude to each of you who are here with us today in this virtual ceremony. The last 17 months have been a disruptive period for all of us on many fronts. The pandemic continues to be a challenge, threatening to envelop the world in a darkness of fear, desperation, and dispiritedness. But rather than yield to this gloom and demoralization, the MBFI and the GTFI have unwaveringly chosen to bear a torch of light. While we look forward to better times, we nurture hope, confident that the noble fire of the good works you do will see our countrymen through. We continue to believe that these days will be defined by men and women who choose to fight fear with kindness, despair with unselfishness, and trepidation with courage. Generosity of spirit will win the day, bannered by hope and belief in the goodness of men and women. We mark this occasion as one burning light of hope. Each of us are torch bearers. Together we multiply the luminosity of hope to brighten the world, bring healing, assurance, and confidence that we stand together and we will get through this together. This is not just GTFI and MBFI rhetoric. Good works such as yours need to be sustained by resources. We are in this together, and you will be supported by financial gifts purposively set aside for your humanitarian work. What you are doing aligns very well with the advocacy of Dr. George SKT, which is to provide synergies by providing financial assistance to organizations that elevate their practices, uphold game-changing movements to address gaps, and link hands to empower those in the margins. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce that we are turning over 15 million pesos in grants for various programs in health, education, and livelihood, among others. We all know that no one person or organization 
can address the needs of our fellow men around us. A network, however, of like-minded organizations can vastly contribute to our nation's recovery and develop new sustainable opportunities following the pandemic. Doing what we can, where we are, and doing it together will definitely make a difference. Friends, let me close by paraphrasing the Evangelist John. There is a light that cannot be consumed by this darkness. We are but reflections of that one brilliant light of hope. Let us shine on and fill our homes, our neighborhoods, our communities, and our country with this one unquenchable light of hope. May the good that you do continue to multiply and brighten the days ahead and in our corners of the world. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Sobre Peña. Before we turn over our donations to our social development partners this morning, allow us to walk you through some highlights of our accomplishments in 2020 and the first half of 2021. The conglomerate has donated a total amount of 346.3 million pesos to fund and support efforts to combat the pandemic and help those in need. Data and statistics are shown on your screen. Interventions range from provision of personal protective equipment for medical frontliners, including members of the AFP and PNP, membership with like-minded organizations to address hunger and establish food security and resiliency, enhanced access to mass testing by donating locally developed RT-PCR detection kits and antibody rapid test kits, and construction of molecular laboratories. Our work did not stop there, Brian. To address further the pandemic's consequences to people's lives, we extended donations to partners to construct water, sanitation, and hygiene facilities or WASH, provide equipment to our educators and learners for blended learning. We also offered scholarship opportunities to the underprivileged and provided livelihood opportunities for women. Aside from that, we also extended our aid to 10 community pantries in Metro Manila for one month. And we also donated to PGH Medical Foundation to restore the fire damage medical facility. On top of that, 18,000 families in select sites nationwide were provided with bags of blessing. And also, through the Disaster Relief and Response Program Helping Hands, a total of 8.9 million pesos was released to extend assistance to more than 100,000 displaced individuals affected by typhoons and volcanic eruption. Sustain our advocacies under our flagship CSR programs, we shifted gears creatively to adapt to the new normal. Our flagship programs in excellence recognition, visual arts, education and sustainable development employed strategies to maintain organizational and program presence. This is our commitment to remain undeterred to respond to the Filipinos' call for collective action, especially in these unprecedented times. We have now come to the highlight of this event, the turnover ceremonies of our grants to this year's Social Development Partners. We begin with our partners for the Health Trust. Just a background, in 1979, Dr. T acquired the majority stocks of the Foundation's healthcare affiliate, Manila Doctors Hospital, and had guided the hospital to become a leading medical facility that also provides social services and subsidies for financially challenged patients. Thus, health is on top of the priorities in the grant-making initiatives of Metrobank Foundation. Last year, we invested in constructing hand hygiene facilities 
that are modified in compliance with the government health and safety protocols to heighten pandemic preparedness for the safe return of students and school personnel. This was done in partnership with the League of Corporate Foundations for its hashtag LCF wins Lingap Escuela sa Pandemia program. This time, we will construct more facilities that will cater to the public. First to receive development assistance is the Manila Water Foundation to support their integrated wash program where specially designed hand hygiene facilities will be constructed. It shall support sustainable development goal number six, which is clean water and sanitation. Two, three faucet hybrid hand hygiene facilities will be constructed in a public hospital in Metro Manila and a public market in Cebu. We have with us Mr. Reginald Andal, Executive Director of the Manila Water Foundation. Magandang araw, mga katubig. Manila Water Foundation, the social development arm of the Manila Water Company, remains steadfast in bringing wash or water access, sanitation, and hygiene to marginalized communities in the Philippines. Our core advocacy is the front and center of the ongoing pandemic for communities and public institutions which face huge gaps in wash facilities, supplies, and education. Despite the many challenges, we forge on and rally our stakeholders to push the wash agenda forward to effect positive change on the health and well-being in different localities. Metrobank Foundation spearheaded a collective impact initiative of LCF wins Ling up Escuela sa Pandemia, which supports the Department of Education's Wash in Schools program in preparation for eventual safe return to face-to-face -face learning. Under this partnership, MBFI extended a helping hand to 20 public elementary schools across the country through its 2.7 million donation of 10 10 faucet hand hygiene facilities and 2,000 hygiene kits with wash storybooks and info education materials benefiting 31,438 learners. Expanding this project, MBFI is granting today 500,000 donation for two three-faucet hybrid hand hygiene facilities in public spaces in the city of Manila and Cebu City where there are still high count of active COVID-19 cases. This project will ensure our efforts in safeguarding public health, saving lives, and keeping the beneficiaries' hopes alive that together we will all recover from this crisis. Tunay na puso at sigasig mula sa Metrobank Foundation, hawak kamay tayo para sa kalinga at kalusugan ng kapwa Pilipino. Maraming salamat po mula sa Manila Water Foundation. What's up, what's up? Thank you, Mr. Andal. Sa ating mga katubig, let's not forget to what's up, what's up? Moving forward to our second partner, the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction or IIRR. Our grant will support their project called Gulayan sa Barangay Contra COVID. Community gardens will be propagated in two schools in the city of Imus and Silang in Cavite. 100 new relief packs with wash kits will be distributed to beneficiaries. 140 families will benefit from this food security and resiliency program whose health and nourishment are impacted by the pandemic. This will support SDG 2 Zero Hunger. We now hear from Ms. Emelita M. Oro, the Country Director, Philippine Program of IIRR. Greetings from the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction. IIRR is a community development, operational research, and training organization that aims to enable communities and those who work with them 
develop innovative yet practical solutions to rural poverty. For more than 60 years now, we have partnered with various stakeholders to implement high-impact and evidence-based programs to uplift the lives of the most vulnerable sector of our society, especially the smallholder farmers and fisher folk, the women, the children, and the youth. The COVID-19 pandemic had brought serious health and nutrition, as well as social and economic impacts. We have seen the breakdown of food supply chains, increasing cost of food, and the intensified hunger and malnutrition, which we haven't seen before. More and more, we realize the need to grow our own food and the importance of social protection interventions. This MBFI supported project, the Gulayan sa Barangay Contra COVID, would establish community gardens that would provide space to select families that are most affected by COVID-19 so that they can grow nutrient-dense crops for their daily food and also can earn supplemental income from garden produce. It will also provide Nutrilief packs. These are nutrition-sensitive food aid that have fresh vegetables that can be eaten as well as can be planted along with some wash resources. Further, it will promote the value of eating vegetables to boost one's immune system. Through this project, we will empower and inspire our beneficiaries to keep their hopes alive during this dark period of the pandemic. On behalf of IIIR, I would like to thank the Metrobank Foundation for supporting the Gulayan sa Barangay movement. Let us all work together to have a more resilient local food production systems to achieve better health, food security, and nutrition for every Filipino family. Thank you, Ms. Emily. I would also like to share with our audience here today that in 2017, we also partnered with IIRR in their WASH program for select schools in Cavite, where we reach more than 7,000 beneficiaries, integrating the importance of sanitation and hygiene to school children. Continue the excellent work, IIRR. Brian, as I mentioned earlier, the first two partners covered the health thrusts of Metrobank Foundation. Now we are ready to introduce the following partners under our education thrust. Lilac, our late founder, Dr. T, recognized accessible quality education as a driving force in the country's social development. Hence, he assisted underprivileged yet academically outstanding students in the fulfillment of their dreams through the Metrobank scholarship programs, pioneered the improvement of math proficiency among the Filipino youth through the annual Metrobank MTAP Deaf Ed Math Challenge, and nurtured the Manila Titana Colleges, which transformed generations of students into professionals with a strong sense of work ethics. We also built legacy projects centered on funding infrastructure projects of top educational institutions. Hence, it is no wonder that funding programs and projects in education is also a major component in the grant-making initiatives of the Foundation. Our third social development partner is no other than the Department of Education. We will sustain our support for learners and educators in adopting to the challenges of blended learning under Metrobank Foundation's Project Teach, or Taking Up Education Access Challenges with the Heart. Printers, copiers, and risograph machines will be donated to 45 public schools in Laguna, Iloilo, and Davao del Norte, benefiting an estimated total of more than 30,000 students. We now hear from the Secretary of the Department of Education, Honorable Leonor Magtolis Briones. Good day, 
everyone, the Department of Education would like to extend its cordial greetings to Ms. Mary V. T. Prasti of Metrobank Foundation Incorporated, Mr. Arthur V. T. Pan of the Metropolitan Bank and Trust Company or Metrobank, and the GT Foundation and Metrobank Foundation. Mrs. Zandra T, Vice President, Metrobank Foundation. Mr. Fabian S. D, President of Metrobank and Trust Company. My very good and very dear friend, Chito M. Sobrepeña, President of Metrobank Foundation uh, Incorporated and Executive Director of GT Foundation Incorporated. Mr. Arfred V. T., President of GT Foundation and Vice Chairman of Metrobank Foundation. And Mrs. Anjanet T. D. Buncio, Trustee of the GT Foundation and the Metrobank Foundation. We in the Department of Education would like to greet and to congratulate these two institutions, one on the 59th year of uh, our foundation uh, and its 59th year of getting, giving grants to uh, the Filipino people, particularly the learners. And we also want to greet and congratulate uh, Metrobank Foundation's 42 years of, <clears throat> of sharing its blessings with the Filipino people, particularly our learners and our teachers. Uh, we all know that uh, on this very happy occasion, where you are uh, turning over a donation and of equipment, of printers, copiers, and risograph machines amounting to three million to our schools in Laguna, in Iloilo, and Davao del Norte for our modular distance learning modality. And this is a very happy occasion uh, indeed. Uh, these donations will surely impact on the lives of our learners. Uh, we all are aware that the most uh, expensive and uh, demanding uh, teaching material, uh, among all others, of course, are the printed modules. And we help the generosity of our two foundations in sharing printers, copiers, and risograph machines will go a long way in impacting on the lives of our children, in making available uh, materials for their lessons. We are also uh, very confident that um, the hopes of our beneficiaries through education will be kept alive in Philippine and Asian culture. The value of education is very uh, precious and the opportunity for our children to have materials as they learn, as they go along in their process of education will surely keep their hopes alive that their lives will be better, that when they uh, finish their schooling, they will find uh, jobs and they will be more responsible members of Philippine society. And so we thank you for this uh, very generous uh, donation, which is being implemented through Project Teach uh, or taking up education access challenges with a heart, with of course importance on the heart uh, itself. All these years, Metrobank foundations have always been 
very uh, supportive and generous partners to the Department of Education for our learners and especially for our teachers. The annual awards, the donations, the recognitions that are given to uh, our teachers and through our teachers to our learners, our teachers innovate new ways of teaching, new ways of making lessons much more fun and enjoyable, of helping students absorb the facts, the lessons, not only of the present, but also of the future. I would also like to greet Mrs. Alessandra T, trustee of the GT Foundation, and my very good friend, Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. He is described as a vaccine czar and chief implementer of the National Task Force Against COVID-19. And I have always been critical of calling him a czar because he does not behave like a czar and he is not dictatorial, does not push his way around. He lis listens and makes decisions in accordance with what are the needs of our country, particularly uh, our uh, COVID uh, patients. I'd also like to greet uh, Dr. Sergio Cao, another good friend. We were together uh, in UP uh, Diliman. We have a common love of music and I try my very best to attend his annual concerts. Do you still have your concerts, uh, Jerry? And also, uh, I must greet the partner development uh, organizations like the Manila Water Foundation, the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction, Department of Education, Family, of course, our Communication Foundation for Asia, International Bazaar Foundation, the DFA Ladies Foundation, the Local Lab Care Philippines, the Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation, Toyota Motor Philippines School of Technology, Advancement for Rural Kids or, or ARC, very uh, appropriate and very uh, uh, interesting, and Communities for Alternative Food Ecosystems or Cafe Ecosystems Initiative or Cafe. We greet all of you on this very uh, auspicious and wonderful occasion. When we have celebrations for generosity, for caring, for helping teachers, policemen, learners, these are always happy and joyous occasions and remind us that there is always hope. That is the favorite uh, quote that I always uh, use um, from, uh, game, uh, from, <clears throat> from Lord of the Rings, of course, attributed to Arwen. And so um, thank you once again to the two foundations for your generosity, for all these years of partnership, of celebration, for traveling the very difficult road of, of education, for helping us to respond to the much uh, feared and much debated so-called crisis in education. Thank you very much, one and all. In the name of the Department of Education, our teachers and our learners, thank you. Magandang uh, araw po sa ating lahat. Ito po ang inyong uh, pangalawang kalihim, DepEd Undersecretary Tony Umali, na nagpapahayag po ng pakikiisa at suporta, DepEd Support, particularly our Trans External Partnership Service Trans Support, 
to Metro Bank's celebration, celebrating an important milestone in reaching 59 years of service to the Filipino people and as well as Metro Bank Foundation's 42 years of sharing its blessings to the Filipinos. Kami rin po, bukod sa pakikiisa at pagbati namin sa isa na namang mahalagang milestone na ito ng Metro Bank at Metro Bank Foundation, ng amin pong pasasalamat dito po sa inyo pong pledge of donation of equipment to our schools amounting to 3 million worth of printers, copiers, risograph machines for distribution to our various schools nationwide. Kanina pong umaga ay nakuha ko po yung uh, report na nakukuha po namin lahat ng mga opisyalis na mayroon na pong humigit kumulang na 12.6 million na enrollees ang nagpatala po ngayon para sa ating school year 2021 to 2022. Patuloy pa rin po ang ating enrollment at inaasahan po natin na makuha po ang parehong dami na nakuha po natin noong nakaraang taon, humigit kumulang 22.5 million learners from kinder to grade 12. Mayroon pa po tayong ilang araw bago po magunang araw ng pasukan at patuloy po tayong kukuha ng mga enrollees mga late enrollees po natin pagkatapos po nito at kami po inananalig na ang tamang dami ng ating mga mag-aaral ay muli po nating makukuha at sila po ay magpapadala, magpapatala at magpapatuloy ng kanilang pag-aaral sa susunod na taon o itong kasulukuyang school year 2021 to 2022. Klarong-klaro na yung pareho po naming hamong kinaharap ng nakaraang taon ay siya pa rin hamon na aming kakaharapin ngayon. Blended learning, distance learning modalities, kailangan-kailangan po natin mga kagamitan para mapatupad po ito, maipalimbag o mapaimprenta ang aming mga self-learning modules dahil ito po'y talagang kailangan-kailangan maski po online-based, TV-based or radio-based learning ang ginagawa ng ating mga anak Mahalaga po na may hawak po silang module na kanila pong masasagutan, makikita, mababasa habang sinasabayan po nila ang nakikita po nila sa kanila pong computer o naririnig sa radio o napapanood sa telebisyon. Yun po ay kung meron silang kagamitan na ganito. Kung wala, lalo pong doble ang kahalagahan ng printed materials po ng ating mga anak kung purely self-learning modules ang kanila pong aasahan sa pag-aaral po nila ngayong taong kasulukuyang school year po natin. At wala hong kaduda-duda na ito pong mga printers, copiers at risograph machines na ibibigay nyo po ay talagang malaki ang maitutulong nito sa ating mga anak para po magpatuloy ang kanila pong pag-aaral sa darating na pasukan. Kung kaya't Pabayaan niyo po kami pasalamatan ang mga tao sa likod po nitong Project Teach, Taking Education Access Challenges with the Heart ng ating Metro Bank at Metro Bank Foundation na naglalayong suportahan ng ilang mga paaralan sa lalawigan ng Laguna, Iloilo, Davao del Norte. Pangunguna po ng ating Metro Bank Foundation Incorporated Trustee, Mrs. Mary V. T., our chairperson. Thank you very much, Mr. Arthur T. of Metrobank and GT Foundation and Metrobank Foundation. Our Metrobank Foundation Vice President, Ms. Zandra T., Mr. Fabian B., President of Metrobank and Trustee also of Metrobank Foundation. Ang ating pong kaibigan, Sir Chito, Mr. Aniceto Subrepeña, President, Metro Bank Foundation Incorporated, Executive Director, GT Foundation. Mr. Alfred T., President, GT Foundation, Vice Chair, Metro Bank Foundation. Ms. Anjanet B., Bunsho Trustee, GT Foundation. 
and Metro Bank Foundation, Mrs. Alessandra T. Trustee, GT Foundation, Vice President, Metro Bank Foundation, Secretary Carlito Galvez, ang ating pong Vaccine Caesar Chief Implementer National Task Force Against COVID-19, Dr. Sergio Chow, President and Chief Academic Officer, Manila Taitana Colleges and Trustee, Metro Bank Foundation, at ang pinuno po ng iba't ibang mga partners po nating organization, development organization, binabati po namin kayong lahat, nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyong lahat sa ngalan ng ating kagawaran ng edukasyon, inuulit po namin, salamat po, salamat po, salamat po, dahil sa inyong lahat, kasama po ng ating mga partners na nandito po ngayon. Ang ating pong isinusulong na makapagpatuloy o magpatuloy na mangarap ang ating mga anak at matupad ang kanilang mga pangarap sa pamamagitan po ng patuloy po nilang pag-aaral ay klarong-klarong maaari pa rin po mangyari dahil po sa inyong lahat yan. Maraming salamat, Metro Bank and Metro Bank Foundation. Mabuhay po kayo. Mabuhay po ang kabataang Filipino. Salamat po. Moving on to our next social development partner under the Education Trust, is the Communication Foundation for Asia. As online learning becomes a norm in the delivery of education, our grant support for CFA will produce digitalized blended learning modules on reading, math, science, media literacy with values integration. This project will assist 125 students from the preschool to grade 3 levels and 25 of their teachers. We now hear from Father Filoteo Pelingon, President of the Communication Foundation of Asia. As we launch today this project between uh, Metro Bank Foundation and Communication Foundation for Asia, I would like to thank Mr. Sobra Peña and all the staff and people who are in Metro Bank for this project. What is this project about? This project is about a joint project between CFA. And what is CFA? Communication Foundation for Asia is dedicated to what we call development communication. What do we mean by development communication? That means to say use communication in support of development. And our vision is uh, total integral human development through for, uh, transformative communication. And it is what we do. In other words, this is also part of our development work to develop the, the children in their in their, in, their, in their education. And so, our philosophy is we educate by entertaining and we entertain in order to educate. And it is why we, we undertake this project of digitalizing modules for children in different subjects that is really basic you know, for those who are uh, starting to learn up to grade three. And of course, the method that you're using is digitalized modules and this can be uploaded in uh, the gadgets like a cell phone and so that they can go around with uh, trying to learn it because it is not just uh, a way of teaching them as it used to be you know face to face but there is also a, uh, an element of uh, uh, entertainment in it and so we hope that this project which is addressed to the poor children of Libis not only to the children, but also to the parents and teachers, because they're going to use this together. And so I hope that it will be a successful project, so much so that later on we can have a multiplying effect, that if it is if, uh, a success in Libis, we can also do it in other places and distribute the modules, that are the, or digitalized modules that we are producing. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Metro Bank Foundation. And we hope that as in the past, we have to work together, we we'll continue working together for the benefit of people. We address ourselves in order for them to develop in life. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Father Pelingon. 
I'm sure that many students have experienced connectivity issues. And with our partnership with CFA, we will help students learn without interruption through their digitalized blended learning modules. Our last two social development partners under the Education Trust are the International Bazaar Foundation and the DFA Ladies Foundation Incorporated. We will support their scholarship programs for underprivileged students pursuing tertiary education. We have here today Madam Maria Lourdes Biloxin, Chairperson of IBF and DFALF. Good morning to the Board of Trustees of the Metro Bank Foundation and the GT Foundation, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the officers and members of the Department of Foreign Affairs Ladies Foundation and the Board of Trustees of the International Bazaar Foundation Incorporated, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to George SKT Group and the Metro Bank Foundation and its president, Mr. Aniceto M. Sobrepeña, for your generous support of the DFALAF and the IPF. Thank you for helping our two foundations accomplish our mission of serving and making a difference in the lives of our beneficiaries. The DFA Ladies Foundation Incorporated is an SEC registered non-stock and non-profit organization of women in the DFA committed to improving and enriching the lives of the members of the Philippine Foreign Service and their families through various initiatives and advocacies. Its vision is to contribute to a more caring, family-oriented, and socially responsible DFA. The flagship program of the Foundation is a scholarship program which began in 1997 and as of last year has benefited 322 scholars belonging to the families of DFALAF members. For the last school year, 20 students were added. At present, we have a total of 57 active scholars. With your grant, we can increase the number of our scholars because from our interviews, a number of students have been forced to move back to their provinces to help their parents sustain their families in this pandemic. They need all the help we can give them to keep up with their studies. The DIFALAF is now celebrating its 25th year and in spite of the world crisis, continues to serve through online engagements, implementing projects for communities in need, and providing much-needed financial and medical assistance to its members. An example is our ongoing vitamin supply distribution to DFA employees who have been victims of COVID. The International Bazaar Foundation Incorporated, on the other hand, organized in 1966, has a vision of assisting the far less privileged indeed disadvantaged through charitable activities and fostering stronger bonds among members of the diplomatic community in Manila. The bazaar of the IBF has become an annual tradition, usually held every November and widely participated by the diplomatic community and Filipino product exhibitors. Our last bazaar held in 2019 there were a total of 220 booths. The IBF is also registered with the SEC as a non-profit and fundraising institutional foundation. Now on its 55th year, the IBF undertakes various projects including offering scholarships to indigent students. It has granted more than 500 scholarships over the years and currently has 42 active scholars. The IBF also supports livelihood projects for distressed communities and victims of calamities, provides financial and in-kind assistance to the elderly, abused and abandoned children, and assists other civic organizations, medical institutions, and NGOs in providing medical care to children, persons with disabilities, the homeless, and other deserving groups. Since the beginning of COVID-19, the IBF has been providing food packs to hospital frontliners and the staff at vaccination sites. To name a few, Paranaque Medical Center, Pasay General Hospital, Hospital ng Muntinlupa, Mandaluyong Men General Hospital, San Lorenzo Hospital, 
San Juan de Dios Hospital, St. Luke's Medical Center, and the Philippine General Hospital. It also donated hygiene kits to 200 residents in the National Center for Mental Health in Mandaluyong City. Its other beneficiaries include San Lorenzo Ruiz Home for the Elderly in Pasay City and the Missionaries of Charity Home of Joy for the Sick Children and Home for the Abandoned Neglected Elderly in Tondo, Manila. We also helped the Carmelite Monastery in Lipa, Batangas, the St. Paul Hospital in Dasmarinas, Cavite, headed by Sister Edith, and Our Lady of Peace Hospital in Paranaque, run by Sister Eva. The Metrobank Foundation has been IBF's partner in pursuing and fulfilling its mission since 1997. This year's grant is especially timely as the IBF has put on hold the annual International Bazaar for the past two years due to the ongoing pandemic. Again, on behalf of the DIFALAP and the IBF, and most especially our beneficiaries, please accept my heartfelt thanks for your kindness and generosity. Thank you and good day. Thank you, Madam Loxin. You know, Laila, this pandemic has brought much disruption in our lives. But we Filipinos are known to be resilient, right? Certainly, Brian. This pandemic also made us realize that while technology and development are necessary, we should not forget the importance of knowing our primary resources and where we are good at. Moving on to our next thrust, which is livelihood. Goal 1, No Poverty, and Goal 2, Zero Hunger of the Sustainable Development Goals respectively aim to end poverty in all forms everywhere and end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. To contribute to realizing these specific SDGs, the Metrobank Foundation deemed it necessary to support programs and projects on livelihood, which will provide opportunities for underprivileged families to be self-sustaining and break away from the cycle of dependence and poverty in the long run. Our first development partner is Local Lab, a Shargao-based NGO that initiates impactful projects that champion sustainability and community empowerment. The grant will support the Local Tabo Network, a local community market. They will provide opportunities for agricultural production and promotion and continued technical assistance for 50 women farmers, producers, and artisans. We now hear from Ms. Iris May Aroa, co-founder of Local Lab. Local Lab is a registered and accredited shargao based NGO that aims to creatively collaborate with and support local communities through sustainable projects. Our goal is to provide equal access to sustainable lifestyles and opportunities within local communities. And a big part of our ethos is that we believe that by solving issues with the community rather than for them, we can actually create lasting and sustainable changes. When the community is included in the decision-making process, we can empower them to take the lead of their future and harness their full potential. So for our project with Metrobank Foundation, we aim to create, teach, and implement a digitized financial literacy program that aims to increase the level of financial literacy among at least 50 small-scale women farmers producers and artisans residing in the municipalities of Burgos and San Isidro and ages 20 to 65 years old. We envision that at the end of this project, we can help improve the level of knowledge of basic financial concepts among participants, such as uh, record keeping, budgeting, cash flow, borrowing, and hopefully able to help them create a savings plan for themselves. This project and this partnership will be vital in keeping the hopes of our beneficiaries alive, especially during this pandemic when everything feels uncertain. 
because it will empower them to take charge, to actually take charge of their financial future. By learning to report, record, and plan, we believe that they will be able to see their way towards a better future more clearly. Thank you, Miss Iris. Have you been to Shargao, Brian? Unfortunately, not yet. I can't wait actually for this pandemic to be over so we can all travel for leisure again. May I ask our attendees here who have been to Shargao? Kindly use our chat box to share their memorable experience in that place. And for those who are still planning to experience Shargao like Lilac and I, let us use uh, our reactions to send our hearts. Thank you for your comments and reactions. But before we pursue our vacation plans, let us first proceed to our next partner. Programs that benefit women and girls are on top of the priorities of our next social development partner, the Care Philippines. The grant will support the Agap Sabatangas project to improve the economic well-being of marginalized households whose livelihoods were doubtly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and the Taal volcano eruptions. We now hear from Ms. Tess Bayombong, Project Director of Care Philippines. To the Metrobank Foundation team, the late George SKP and his family, Mr. Aniceto Sobrepeña, President of MBFI, Care Philippines staff, guests, good day everyone. I echo Care Philippines' gratitude for this partnership. Care has been working in the Philippines since 1949, and we have been partnering with both government and private organizations since then. In 2020, CARE has worked with more than 70 communities, reaching a million individuals uniquely through our different initiatives, including food security and livelihoods, water, sanitation and hygiene, health and psychosocial support services, and protection against gender-based violence. CARE focuses on working with women and girls to increase their resilience from crisis and provide spaces for them to live. This partnership with Metrobank Foundation opens up new opportunities for CARE and our partners to work together in vulnerable communities around the Philippines. The Agap Sabatangas project aims to improve the economic well-being of 250 marginalized households whose livelihoods were doubly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and the intermittent Taal volcano eruptions since January 2020. AGAP, or Ascensus a Good Agriculture Package, is a tested innovative approach to livelihood recovery and increasing resilience by establishing sustainable vegetable production and promoting resilience strategies at household and enterprise level. The project will provide training and technical assistance to households on good agriculture practices, disaster risk resilience, financial literacy, gender equality, and access to market. Five AGAP probing agents will be coached to deliver the AGAP interventions and sustain the services beyond the project. They will be trained on market assessment, good agriculture practices, and supply chain management. The AGAP Sabatangas project will be co-implemented by CARE and its local partner, the Southern Tagalog People's Response Center or STPRC, over a 12-month time frame. Through this partnership with Metrobank Foundation, CARE and STPRC aim to build resilient and self-sustaining communities led by women in Balete, Batangas. CARE looks forward to take the engagement with Metrobank Foundation forward and onward as we continue to support women and girls in the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tess. Lilac to add in 2020 alone, Care Philippines reached close to 1 million people, providing food, clean water, wash kits, and livelihood assistance, including implementation of protection from gender based violence programs. That's impressive work, Brian. I have also read that 6 out of 10 of the people Care works with are women. 
and their programs already reach 70 cities and municipalities nationwide. Our last social development partner under the grants program of the Metrobank Foundation and still under the Livelihood Trust is the Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation, one of our long-time partners since 2013. Typhoon Ulysses affected around 7,000 fisher folks in the Bicol region last year. The support is for the Adopt a Fisherman program, which assists 150 fisher folk families in yellow boat communities. Boats will be donated to them to support their livelihood. We now hear from Dr. Anton Marie Lim, President of Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation. Good morning. Thank you for inviting us to the annual Metrobank Grants Turnover Ceremony. I'm Doc Anton Lim, the founder and president of the Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation. The main mission of Yellow Boat is not only to ensure no kid will have to swim to go to school, but actually that they stay and finish school. Integral to that happening is to make education affordable to the parents by providing them not fish, but the tools to fish. A wise fisherman in Tokloban during Typhoon Yolanda once told me, why do I have to wait in line for hours just to get a can of sardine when there are fresh fishes out in the ocean? Give us a boat and you don't have to worry about us. For fisher folks, having a dependable fishing boat is all that they need to restore hope and dignity of providing for their own family. Because of Typhoon, Quinta, Rolly, and Ulysses, some fisher folks in Bicol region lost their fishing boat. Fishing being their only primary source of income and the only thing they know what to do. Life for their family is hard without one. With the donation from Metrobank Foundation, we can now restore the dignity of the fishermen by giving them the capability of not only providing for their family, but a tangible hope for a better future. Thank you, Metrobank, for being a reliable partner. Hope sails because of you. Thank you, Dr. Anton. Last year, Dr. Anton said that he misses our face-to-face -face anniversary events because we always serve good food and we can do some catch-up with our friends in the development sector. Well, the reason why our theme this year is Keeping Hope Alive is that like you, Dr. Anton, we are hoping to see all our development partner and hold this event face-to-face -face in the coming years. We now go to our last batch of social development partners who will receive their grants. These are the partners of GT Foundation who serve as instruments in advancing the advocacy of Dr. T and his family in nation and community building through strategic interventions in education and food sustainability. The scholarships for Tech Walk Education Program or STEP allows deserving students to contribute to productivity and develop employable skills as tools to reduce poverty. One of our partners is the Toyota Motor Philippines School of Technology or TMP Tech, a world-class technical training school at the Toyota Special Economic Zone located in Santa Rosa, Laguna, which the late Dr. T has established. The scholarship grant will assist 20 students aspiring to finish a two-year general automotive servicing course. This course will allow them to have learning sessions, train a Toyota de dealership, and attain Tesla national certification, leading to a better employment opportunities. We now hear from the president of TMP School of Technology, Dr. David Go. Toyota Motor Philippine School of Technology. TMP Tech is a non-stop, non-profit educational institution offering technical vocational education. Its mission is to train automotive technicians to serve mainly the growing demand for Toyota technicians, both domestic and overseas. It was founded by Dr. George SKT 
aiming to produce highly skilled Filipino workers to ensure the availability of technicians to serve our local dealer network and to produce highly skilled Filipino workers. Together with him is Dr. Shoichiro Toyoda, who is optimistic that the school can support and give value to the Toyota brand. Our organization beneficiaries are deserving and talented, but financially disadvantaged young people that need opportunities to help them gain access to quality education in the field of automotive. GT Foundation provides financial assistance and support to qualified and underprivileged students of TMP Tech with the implementation of the GTFI TMP Tech Scholarship Technical Education Program, also known as GTFI TMP Tech STEP. Upon completion of their studies, Beneficiaries become skilled and are able to uplift their economically challenged lives to take part in building a better future for the Filipino society as they accelerate their dreams. Thank you, Dr. Go. TMP School of Technology has been a reliable partner of GT Foundation in producing a competent workforce in the technical vocational sector. The current pandemic changed the dynamics of food systems, and food-related issues such as food security and malnutrition became more prevalent. The last two partner organizations respond to the needs of communities and aim to provide sustainable feeding to those who have lost their jobs and means of livelihood. Advancement for Rural Kids, or ARK, pioneered Project Feedback, a vegetable exchange program aiming to solve hunger in five weeks. The grant is for the implementation of the Project Feedback Wave 6 in five communities in the province of Iloilo and will benefit a total of 1,750 families. We now hear from the CEO and founder of ARK, Ms. Ayesha Vera Yu. Hello, I'm Ayesha Vera Yu, the CEO and co-founder of Advancement for Rural Kids. At ARC, I partner with farmers and fisher folks who want to secure their food, health, their kids' schooling, and a self-sustaining future. I partner with them because they're the ones feeding us, yet they're struggling to feed their kids. They're in a structural bind. Many rely on only one crop. And aside from that buyer of that crop, there's no other market in the village. No one else is investing in them. When the pandemic started, our partners were scared they were worried that hunger would rise and strife would follow. So with them and visionary partners like GT Foundation, we created Feedback, a neighborhood vegetable exchange. This exchange is open to everyone in the community. It is held in each Purok. It meets once a week for eight weeks. And because it's a guaranteed market, it inspires families to plant in their backyards and to commit to exchange three of their vegetables for their fair share of over 20 vegetables contributed by their neighbors. The results are astounding. The communities who did feedback solved hunger in just five weeks. For the first time, families are eating from their backyards, farmers have diverse crops, and fisher folks have gardens. All of the families were generating excess, which they bring to the exchange, sell to each other, and to neighboring villages and towns. Because the communities lead and run the program on their own, it unites them and makes everyone feel proud, hopeful, and happy. Because of GT Foundation, we were able to share this program to five communities in 2020, transforming over 6,000 lives. To everyone at GT, I am happy to report that your impact is sustainable and long lasting. Those who have graduated as far back as nine months ago continue to plant, be healthy, and grow their vegetable businesses. For Trashano, a rice and corn farming community in Capiz, this is now their second year where there is no hunger. This is a huge change from having a hunger season year after year for decades. Hunger is now at crisis levels. One in every five Filipino has experienced hunger, even before the two lockdowns this year. I am deeply grateful to GT Foundation 
thank you for helping prove feedback, which is now which has now garnered the support of industries, foundations, and the central government. Thank you for wanting to partner with us once again and wanting to share feedback throughout the Philippines, starting with at-risk communities in Iloilo. By solving hunger for good and in a self-sustaining way, you will be securing a quarter of a million lives in just two years. You'll also create new livelihoods and industries in these long forgotten rural areas, and you will be building a just and equitable future for our nation. Thank you, Sir Chito, Caleb, Lilac, and Brian for believing in us and our feedback from the very beginning. We are so honored and proud to be partners with you. Madamo Gidna Salamat. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ayesha. Shout out also to the whole ARK team present in this platform. Last but certainly not the least is the Communities for Alternative Food Ecosystems Initiative or CAFEI. The grant will support implementing a phase two expansion of the Grow It Yourself feeding and gardening program in Cebu City. This second phase aims to target 300 families and engage them in backyard organic farming. We know here from Ms. Teresa Ruelas, Executive Director and Founder of CAFEI. Hello, I'm Teresa Dos Dos Ruelas. I'm the Founder and Executive Director of Communities for Alternative Food Ecosystems Initiative, or CAFEI. Actually, our work and calling started in 2014 when we met the most amazing farmers in the northern and southern parts of Cebu, where they were practicing their traditional farming, which was organic, natural, chemical-free, and pesticide-free. What we did with them was to begin the Cebu Farmers Market. It was the first and only farmers market that sold organically grown and naturally processed products. Over the years, our farmers markets became three weekly farmers markets in different places in Metro Cebu. Then we started to expand and we began to deliver edible gardening as workshops in schools and daycare centers because we felt that the need for gardening in the cities was very important. And then last year, the pandemic arrived. It was then that our work on edible gardens really had to meet the needs of the city because of all the areas that were really hit by the pandemic during the lockdowns were our poor communities in urban settings. Nothing was reaching them. Their breadwinners had lost their jobs. They couldn't go out and earn income or find food. So what we did was convert our edible gardens programs into what we're calling now our Grow It Yourself feeding and gardening program. And this is when the GT Foundation found us. And without delay, we got together and they funded our a full-blown Grow It Yourself program for 150 poor urban residents in Barangay Pitos, Cebu City. In 12 weeks, these 150 urban residents became wonderful urban gardeners in very small areas in their homes, and they were able to harvest and cook for the first time for many of them, nutritious, um, freshly harvested um, produce and they were ready for another round. And because of this, they have been able to achieve the following. Because of our gardening, they're able to feed themselves, they're able to save money, earn income, they're able to help feed a nation, and they're able to love our planet. That's why we're very excited about our partnership with GT Foundation. If we can attract more and more communities to live in this way, then we will meet our dream of really building food ecosystems that are sustainable and that can avail themselves 
of really rich, nutrition, nutritious food um, for everybody. So we're very grateful to GT Foundation. Thank you so much for your support and partnership. And happy anniversary, Metro Bank. Thank you very much, Ms. Teresa. That completes the turnover of grants to this year's social development partners. We are grateful to our partners in the civil society and academe as conduits of the social development assistance to benefit our target beneficiaries. The 15 million pesos total grant is nothing but a spark, but you, our development champions, will be sustaining that flame to keep the hope alive. We look forward to the success of our projects and our future output and impact. At this point, we would like to introduce our guest of honor who graciously accepted our invitation despite his busy schedule. Our guest of honor is the head of the COVID-19 Interagency Task Force, the Presidential Advisor for the Peace Process, the Vaccine Czar, and 2007 Metrobank Foundation Outstanding Soldier. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. On behalf of the Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process and the National Task Force Against COVID-19, I congratulate the Metrobank Group as you celebrate your 59th year anniversary. Metrobank has been among the national government most trusted and reliable private sector partners, especially in carrying out initiatives that aim to help those who have been severely affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Since the health crisis broke out last year, Metrobank has been supporting various programs and projects to uplift the lives of our countrymen and enable them to cope with the challenges caused by this health crisis. For the past 59 years, Metrobank has been contributing to the development of our economy and help provide financial stability to millions of Filipinos. And for the last 42 years, your institution has been sharing its blessing and lending a helping hand to those who are most in need. The national government is honored to be working side by side with Metrobank, which is driven by its generosity, passion, and commitment to serve its countrymen during this difficult time. Once again, congratulations and happy anniversary to the outstanding men and women of Metrobank. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you, Secretary Galvez, for that inspiring message. Indeed, the government and the private sector must complement each other to achieve a more significant impact this time. Through strategic collaborations, we can all come out of this pandemic as ever-resilient Filipinos. As our program comes to a close, we would like to remind everyone in the Zoom platform to stand by for a photo opportunity after the ceremony. Brian, before we end, may I also announce that the MBFI 2020 Annual Report with the theme, Keeping Hope Alive, a fitting tribute to every person who endured, turned to hope, and acted towards achieving progress for our country and people, will be available via our website, mbfoundation.org.ph. The Sustainable Development Goals, also known as the Global Goals, were adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that by 2030, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. We believe that we are continuing our journey towards a sustainable future. We invite everyone to join us in this symbolic ceremony to signify our commitment. To show our support for these global goals, 
We request our panelists to turn on their cameras and raise your placards. Thank you very much. May we again request Sir Chito and our development partners to turn on your cameras with your placards as we document this symbolic All right. I am sure that everyone is inspired today as we listen to the messages of our partners. And you know what, Brian? We received a lot of well messages or well wishes from our development partners in our chat. So maybe you can read one while we are documenting this uh, photo scenario. Thank you, Ms. Lila. So I have here a message from Ms. Emily of IIRR. Happy to partner with Metrobank Foundation and GT Foundation in the efforts to help vulnerable sectors of our society through sustainable community development programs. Thank you very much. I would also like to get one from GT Foundation. Uh, this is a message of Ms. Ayesha Verayu on behalf of ARK. Thank you, GT Foundation and Metrobank Foundation, for believing in us and wanting to build a food-secure and self-sustaining future with rural communities throughout the Philippines. Congratulations on your 59th anniversary. Mabuhay, GT Foundation and Metrobank Foundation. Thank Lila. you so much. Okay, we ask our partners to stay with your cameras on as we take this opportunity for some more photo documentation. May we now request the T family and the senior officers of Metrobank to join our partners for a photo op. Please turn on our cameras. <laughs> this will be just a quick uh, photo op for all of us. We would like to ensure that we have a photo op with you together with our partners. Thank you. And now may we invite everyone in the Zoom platform to join the photo documentation. So all in our uh, all our participants and guests in the present in the Zoom platform today, kindly turn on your cameras. And mm -hmm. while we are having this photo opportunity, I would like to plug that our conferment ceremonies of our outstanding Filipinos will also go live today at 3 p.m. via the Metrobank Outstanding Filipinos FB page. So if you're free this afternoon, we invite you also to watch this virtual event. And lastly, may we request everyone uh, to spare us some more of your time to answer our online feedback form posted here in our chat and also on our FB page. We will be sending this form to your email addresses too. Thank you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to a close this year's George SKT Grand Turnover Ceremony. We hope that you keep that light of flame illuminating not only our paths but others as well. On behalf of the board, we thank everyone for joining this virtual location. We hope to see you again in the next George SKT Grand Turnover as we celebrate Metrobank's 60th anniversary next year. As the dawn breaks and the sun holds the promise of a new day, its light unfolds. The earth was made with you in mind for you to wake up, for you to shine. You are called to be the best, to make a difference where you can. Sell, engage, and empower communities across the land. Metro Bank Foundation, a ready helping hand. Look to tomorrow, yesterday's gone. Believe in yourself, believe you were made to exist. Be the best to make a difference where you can to excel, engage, and empower 
Communities across the land, you are called to be the best. Make a difference where you can. To excel, engage, and empower communities across the land. Natural Bank Foundation. Metro Bank Foundation. Metro Bank Foundation. Already helping.